Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the ever popular JB Weld Quick Weld. Is it actually any good? Keep watching to find out more. So on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the JB Weld Quick Weld. Now this is essentially the same as the original and the really popular JB Weld, but this has a faster setting time. So this will actually set in six minutes. It's got a cure time of between four to six hours. And yeah, once it's done, effectively, it's gonna be hard as steel. Now we've got some things which really do need repairing on the desk here. So there's a kind of like an eclectic mix here. So I figured I'd try them all at the same time We'll do this video in two parts. So we'll do the first part, we'll actually do the stick in, repair and etc. Then obviously we're gonna let it set, let it do its curing, etc. And then we'll come back a little bit later to see actually how well it fared. And actually if this is suitable for doing the kind of repairs that we're doing here, uh, which are slightly unusual. But anyway, let's get on with it. So the first one is uh, a relatively uncommon thing, but certainly will have various applications which will be quite similar. Now this is gonna be a plastic repair, which I guess really we should have used the plastic weld, but this is suitable for pretty much most surfaces, so I figured I'd give it a go. Now, most of you have probably seen these before. These are the kind of grips which you use to put mobile phones in, etc., either on a tripod or maybe in a car, that kind of thing. And it's a spring-loaded device with basically, essentially, pretty much all plastic construction. So it just stretches, but after a while, these plastic bits get a little bit fragile and they do tend to break, which is why we've got this one here, which, as you can see, has broken off. Now I'll give you a close up of that so you can see what it actually looks like and see what the break is like. It's actually on a particularly kind of awkward fracture point there. So we don't, haven't actually lost any plastic as such, but what I want to try and do is, I'm not going to use super glue because clearly that just isn't going to hold, especially when we try and put any kind of stretch on it, it's just going to snap straight off. So using the steel hardener, actually in the JB Weld, it's kind of reinforced, so hopefully it should do the trick. So we're going to stick that back on there. We're also going to put in a little bit of extra hardener and the compound itself actually surrounding the area to kind of bridge it a little bit as well, just to see if it actually will do it. And after when it's cured, whether or not we'll still be able to use it in its kind of spring fashion without it just separating straight away. So that's definitely gonna be an interesting one to find out if it actually works on that kind of uh, application. And I'm sure there's those of you out there that are possibly looking at JB Quick Welding thinking, I've got this particular application, which is not quite the norm, will it actually work? So hopefully this is gonna answer it for you. The next one we've got is a more automotive application. Now this is a mass airflow sensor for a older BMW. And sadly this one has snapped off on the side. So on these particular ones, they snap onto the airbox. There's bits on the side there and they, just, they snap on. It's like a compression fit. So this is obviously a, a fracture point. So there's lots of different angles, etc., on here. And I'm just curious to see if actually we can build it up enough so that it will actually hold on and perhaps be usable again. Now I don't actually have the vehicle anymore, so I can't do a practical test to see if it actually does clamp on, but certainly we can put it on there and try and give it a little bit of force to see if it moves or whether or not it's just gonna snap straight off. The next one out there for some of you PC enthusiasts, you may have uh, come across this before. Now this is a slightly older Cooler Master fan and it actually has brackets on the side again, plastic, and there is a fracture point on this one. Again, I'll give you some close-ups of that so you can see it a little bit better, but this is supposed to be pretty much solid but on this end here, it's basically cracked and snapped away. So it moves around and when the fan is actually in use, it rattles, etc., and doesn't clip on particularly well. The other side's absolutely fine. So I want to know really if we can get a, uh, a good enough application of the quick weld on there and whether or not it's actually gonna hold it and whether or not it's really usable for this type of application. The last one is an even stranger one, which some of you, <laughs> yeah. This is one of those things where we've got two plastic surfaces. So we've got this uh, Star Wars themed lamp and it basically plugs into the receptacle. Now, because of the way it's spring mounted, when you put it in, it's got a tendency to pop out, which uh, you'll hopefully see from some of the close-ups here. But essentially when it's pushed in, yeah, it just wants to spring back out. Now, I could use super glue, and actually, in fact, I did use super glue on one of the other ones I had, and it was fine for a little while, but because this is generating heat actually in its AC transformer in the bottom here, after a while, because of the heat, the expansion and contraction, yeah, it just breaks off again. And these, when they do pop out a little bit, it makes the light bulb flicker, etc. And actually, we've got the same thing going on in the background here with our Superman one, which, yeah, as you can see, it wants to flicker. So it's just, again, it's one of those things, there's a spring tension involved, which is one of those things which a lot of glues really do struggle with. So I thought it'd be really interesting to see if we can put a, uh, a small bead of the JB Weld Quick Weld in there 
and see if it will actually hold this in place. Obviously, we're going to have to kind of hold it in place and keep it pressed down during the curing process and uh, well, and also the setting process so it doesn't just pop back out anyway. Or maybe we can get it to such a point where it just holds in place. But yeah, we'll see how it goes during the application. So that is it. That's the parts introduced. There is also another thing I've done as well with this. Uh, quite often, I tend to use some super strong double-sided tape. I've used that. I've actually got some speakers on my desk which haven't really got anywhere which I can properly mount them. So I ended up using double-sided tape and just sticking the speakers to the side of my desk cabinet. Now, in theory, it should work out absolutely fine. It's a completely flat surface on both the speaker and also on the desk. So using some high quality tape, you'd think that the speakers would just stay there. But again, because it's a computer desk, we've got a large monitor there. It's heating up, then it's cooling down. And it just seems after a while, every now and then I hear a thump where one of those relatively heavy Creative Lab speakers just yeah, falls to the ground. So what I want to do again, using this, it is a relatively quick set thing. So I actually mix some of this up, put it on the side of the speaker, pushed it against the side, held it in place for six minutes because there was really no other option. And actually, I've got to say, that was one of my kind of trial things to see if this was any good. And it has stuck absolutely solid. And I did try off camera, literally just trying to rip the speaker off the side. And I think if I pull it too hard, it's either going to damage the plastic or it's going to take some of the laminate of the desk off. So that is definitely a win. That has certainly worked. So if you're in a similar situation where you've got something with a flat surface against a flat surface and you want to mount it in place and you don't want it to go anywhere, then yeah, this definitely is a good idea for that. But for these kind of applications, we're not too short a moment. So I suppose the only thing we can do now is get on, mix it up and see how it goes. So this is it, this is the product. So JB Weld Quick Weld Quick Setting Steel Reinforced Epoxy. So we've got two parts to this. We've got the one with the black label on the side there. So this is the steel. And you've got this one here with the yellow on, which is the hardener. Now the theory is you're supposed to mix these in equal proportions and then mix them together. And then they are essentially ready to be used. Now as you can see, it says on the side there, this is great for household repairs, automotive, plumbing, marine, crafts, and more. I wouldn't recommend using this on a petrol tank, that kind of thing. I think that's probably a little bit more than what it's designed for, although there are other options in the JB Weld family and also others. We did a review of some Abro steel, which you can check out in the top corner there. That was actually really good and is also designed for uh, petrol installations and that kind of stuff. So anyway, let's take this out and I've actually cut this off delicately so I can actually <laughs> do it in a kind of unboxing fashion. So there we go. So we've got our quick weld. This is the steel, like I said, and then we've also got our hardener. Now I would suggest if you can use something to mix this on, obviously there are chemicals in here which could burn, etc. Uh, I'm just using an old piece of plastic, so a bit of recycling there, and I'm using an old PCI Express blanking plate bracket. Now actually, funny story, well, possibly funny. I actually used this yesterday to do the speakers, like I said, so you can see there's some residue there. I actually left this overnight on the, uh, the quick weld there, and actually when I came to use it again today, this thing was very, very difficult to get off. And actually, I wasn't sure which was going to go first. I actually got to the point where the metal was actually bending. So yeah, it was very, very strong, even though it was kind of just the, uh, the little tip there, which was stuck in the, uh, the epoxy there. But literally, I could bend it kind of up to here and just the plastic was moving. So yeah, it's a, a very good seal. And you can probably just about make out on the, uh, the plate there. There is a little bit of residue left on there. So yeah, anyway, as a little side note, so let's mix up some of this. So first of all, we're going to do some of the steel itself. Again, you want to mix up equal proportions. So we're just going to do a little uh, line of it in here. And there we go. There's a little bit of the, uh, the steel. And next we're going to do some of the hardener. You can just run a little blob of it alongside. That should be enough. Actually, it's probably a little bit too much, but hey ho. They do actually do this as well in a uh, kind of like a syringe mixer, which is a lot easier to use. So what we want to do is just mix this up. It does dry to like a gray or kind of charcoal color. So for certain things like automotive plastics, uh, it's going to be great for that because you can use it and it will be relatively well hidden. So there is definitely an application that you could use it for there. So there we go, just give it a good mix up and then we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tiny bit just in these sections here. At least I'm going to try for a tiny bit. 
a little blob there. I'm going to do a little blob there. It's actually quite, quite difficult to actually apply this. Try not to get it inside. I can help it. So there you go. We've got a get you a better angle. So you can see there, just a few little dabs just to hold it in place. Don't want to use too much. Just enough to uh, secure the top section. So we've wasted a bit there, which is unfortunate, but hey ho, there you go. So making sure it's around the right way. So Star Wars logo that side. And all we're going to do is pop that inside and squidge it into place. And already you can see some of it slightly is uh, kind of come around the edge there, but luckily it's going to dry almost the same color as that. So sadly, I've got to find now uh, something to hold this in place for approximately six minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll probably have to break away from this. I might actually just leave it overnight as well, just to see how it goes. I might just get some cable ties. That would actually work out really well. Put a cable tie around there and hold that in place. So yeah, that is, uh, that, is that part done. So we can move on to the next one. So there we go. Uh, we've swapped places, myself and Kath. So what I'm going to do is, I've got some cable ties here, just bunched together. So what I'm going to do is put those through there. And hopefully, we've made that just about long enough, which I think I have. Sadly, I didn't have any cable ties which were long enough actually uh, available. Well, not easily available anyway. I couldn't be bothered to go and get them. So if we uh, put a bit of tension on that, I think that's going to hold. Move that around a little bit. And yeah, that's great. That is uh, cable tied in place. So again, really this needs to be held in place for the minimum of six minutes to actually set, uh, which actually, when I said with the speakers, I held them for six minutes and then when I let go, they did stay in place. So that's absolutely fine. But again, because this is spring loaded, I don't want it popping out unnecessarily. So uh, that's all cable tied up. So we'll just leave that to the one side for now. And then we can let that dry. I'll probably let that dry overnight. It's uh, about five o'clock here in the UK, so potentially four to six hours. So yeah, you never know. We might revisit this a little bit later on this evening. We'll see how things go. Ideally, you want to leave this in a room which is kind of like relatively warmish, so somewhere in about 20 degrees. I think it does say that if it's less than 40 degrees Fahrenheit, then the curing time will be considerably longer. So if you're using this in an outside application, uh, yeah, obviously take into consideration the instructions on the back. So anyway, that is our Star Wars lamp potentially fixed and resolved. So the next thing to do, I think we'll take a look at the spring-loaded camera mechanism and see if we can repair that. Um, I haven't got high hopes for this, I'll be completely honest with you. But anyway, let's take a look at it. So this is the uh, the phone holder, as we saw a little bit earlier in the video. So yeah, I'm going to make up some, some new JB Quick Weld now. As you can see, this is kind of it's kind of setting already, so it, it does have a very quick set time, like I said, between four to six minutes. And I don't think really for this particular application, which is, it really could require a little bit of kind of uh, a higher viscosity to let it kind of settle into the joints. Whereas this now is, uh, yeah, it's pretty much solid. As you, well, yeah, it's, it's sticky as all hell. But yeah, it's a little bit too thick. So yeah, we're gonna mix up some more paste and then we'll try and apply it. So here is our section. Sorry if it's a little bit shaded here. Let's see if we can get some better light. There we go. So you can see what's going on. So I'm just gonna blob a little bit along there, which is probably way too much. Oh, and we've got it on the desk. Good job it's not new. Oh, it is. So that is attached that back together. So what I want to do is actually reinforce this section a little as well. Now don't worry if you apply too much because it is actually machinable and sandable, all those kinds of things. So there we go. The air is actually on there. I think we've covered pretty much everything that we can there. Might be an idea to try and get some across, just bridging it a little bit. I think that kind of glob we've got there should, in theory, hold it. Now, with this, because it is a uh, again, it's a quick set, so we don't really have to hold it in place too much, and hopefully, 
it's actually it is moving a little bit so let's hold that in place yeah so it is moving a little bit so we probably do want to hold it and make sure it's firmly in there so i'm gonna hold that in place um sadly i'm probably gonna have to do this for a few minutes but you can just about see there where the uh the goop is coming up over the top it's uh, often a case like this where you wish you had more hands so you could actually kind of smooth out a little bit across that top section anyway so i'm going to hold this for six minutes we're not going to bore you to death with that but we will bore you to death with the results uh in a little while so we'll be back shortly after okay so we're on to the uh, the next one so let's see if i can get some better light on here so as you can see this uh this whole section down here is fractured so we need to kind of reinforce that and stick that all back together also actually when i was looking at it just now there's actually a fracture on this side as well so we've got the uh the same thing happening in two very uh very similar areas but in different places so what i'm going to try and do is actually try and pull that apart a little bit or maybe just bridge that slightly over there and possibly on the back if i can although there is like a mountain on there so i don't really want to have too much too much gloop going on there so maybe if we try it just on the outside on this one just put a, uh, a bead of it along there see if we can get some actually inside which i think is going to be difficult on here as you can see this section probably would have been better maybe a little drop of super glue inside first of all and then some of that other stuff on after just to see how it does anyway let's mix up some more and uh, we'll see how it does all right so this is not going to be easy We've got a little bit on there, and if I open up the uh, the gap there, maybe get a little bit in behind. Oh, that's way too much. And it's way too much again. Never mind. We can sand it down after. And that, I think, is in place now. Yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. That's, a, that's a, not a bad repair. A little bit gloopy on the other side. There we go. There's a little, slightly better shot, slightly more in focus. The camera's struggling to focus, actually, because it is quite close, because we're zoomed in quite considerably. There we go. Just take off a little bit there. So that's that side done. Now I've got to try and do the other side without getting it on the, uh, on the table there. So we're in this corner here. So I'm just going to spread some on there. You can be quite careful with it if you're uh, not so cack handed as I am. Kind of really splodge that in there. Uh, yeah, there you go. Just about see that. Yeah, we've got some uh, we've got some decent coverage there, I think. And maybe a little bit more needed in that section. So let's see if we can bend that out. And just smooth some into that little gap. There we go. That's good. So then when it goes back together, it should kind of squish in. There we go. We've seen some of the... Oh, crap. <laughs> I've got it on my hands. Um, got it on there pretty good, I think. It seems to have squidged out a bit, so that's good. So I guess we are pretty much done there. I don't think there's a great deal more we can do with that, apart from just let it uh, sit. I'll try and get rid of some of those blobs. Yeah, just let it sit and uh, let it cure. I'm going to leave that face down and not touch it. And yeah. So there we go, I think that is done. Uh, we've got a little bit in that corner, we've got a little bit in that corner. Still a little bit damp, I've got it all over my hands as well. So I think that is it for that. So we can let that uh, cure. Again, because there isn't any movement in this as such, we don't have to kind of clamp it or hold it in place. Uh, we'll just let nature take its course there and let it set for six minutes. Again, I might just let this set overnight. I think that's probably gonna be the, uh, the better thing to do. And then we can go after and see, see how well it's done. So onwards and upwards to the next one, which is going to be the hardest one and the one I have least enthusiasm to do. So time for the next one.
So here's the uh, the next part. This is the mass airflow sensor. I think it's from E36 BMW. I'm pretty sure it is. And as you can see, this is at a pretty catastrophic failure in terms of the uh, the plastic giving out. Uh, I think it was just dropped somewhere when it was particularly cold. So you can see we've got the uh, the very broken bits there. So in this particular instance, because there's so many different surfaces, it's probably going to be a good idea to kind of remove some of the uh, the edgings where it's a little bit rough because I don't think even if I put it in as I think that goes under there so yeah you can see actually saying that that might not be too bad we might be able to resurrect that you know it might just go so that's with it just pushed in place there so yeah pretty much I think we've got all the plastics in I don't think there's any bits necessarily missing, but again, we are going to have to probably hold that in place. The most important bits are going to be around in here, because if there's any gaps in there, then it's going to allow air actually into the mass airflow sensor, which means it wouldn't work. So we're probably going to have to uh, put a load of gloop in there, just to make sure that that's a, a full seal, and also that will strengthen it as well. And hopefully, yeah, we might have to kind of press that in place. That wants to come out. So yeah, this might be tricky. I might try and get rid of some of the, uh, the additional plastic in this area. Maybe chip a little bit off. Just trying to work out where the, the points are, where it's actually trying to push itself away. So definitely need some area in here. So maybe take off some of these rougher edges at the top there. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a... Um, a small file or something and I'm going to try and take off some of these high points just to uh, give it a fighting chance. Ideally we want it so that when this is pushed in place it kind of just falls in and there isn't any real fracture gaps but as you can see it does it's kind of forcing against itself at the moment which is probably not the, uh, the best thing for a good fix. So we're going to pause there I'll do a few little modifications and then we'll come straight back. Okay, so there we go. I've uh, I've cleaned it down a little bit. So as you can see, I've just basically taken a knife around most of those edges, just to take them down a little bit. And I've done the same in here, taken a knife and yeah, try to kind of deeper any of the sharpness or irregularities. So now when I put this in, if I can do it. So there we go. It kind of it almost falls into position now because we've taken off a lot of plastic. And if I push it into place, you can see the crack, yeah, it's kind of staying in place, so the crack that we originally had has been uh, considerably reduced, as you can hopefully see. So now it should really just be a case of actually just uh, getting a, a load of that stuff on there, the JB quick weld, and just trying to seal up any of those gaps. As you can see on that top bit there where we've got the arrow, there's a, a pretty decent sized gap there. So. That's fine, because what we're doing is we're filling and we're bridging at the same time. So I'm going to go and mix up a whole boatload of uh, the JB Quick Weld, and we'll see how it goes. So we'll try and get some in where wherever we can. Luckily on this, there's not too much we need to worry about in terms of actually tolerances. Try 
and avoid where the clip goes because that's going to make uh, reinstallation a little bit more tricky. I think we've pretty much got it. It's very difficult to tell in this light. I think we've pretty much done it. Obviously, if when it's dried, you notice some other tiny little holes or cracks, you can always fill those back in after. I think that is pretty much it. Let's see if we can get it down that corner a little bit more. One thing to bear in mind is when you're putting on uh, this stuff and you're actually putting it in quite thickly, then I would uh, give it a little bit more setting time, a little bit more curing time. I'll try and tidy it up a little bit so it doesn't look quite so uh, destroyed. I think that's pretty much done it. Again, it's quite difficult to see in these conditions, but and there we go. I think there's a little bit of mist just around here. Yeah, there's a crack there. So put a load in there. Like I said, this is not only is it kind of like an adhesive or a glue, it also can be used to bridge because of the amount of uh, kind of resiny, fibery sort of steel or whatever it is, the compound they use in here. So you can just smother it on and it will create a kind of bridging effect. So I think we've pretty much covered it there. I don't think I've missed anywhere in particular. It isn't pretty, I'll give you that. But if it holds it, then uh, that'll be happy days. So anyway, that is uh, pretty much my bodge fix done. So let's let this cure over the next four to six hours and uh, we'll see how strong it actually is. Okay, so we're back and it's been uh, approximately, um, actually I don't know how long it's been at all. It's a little bit later, we've had a little bit of bite to eat and watched a little bit of YouTube. It's probably about two hours, maybe three hours tops. And let's take a look at the results of the JB Quick Weld. Now this isn't a sponsored video in any way, shape or form. I'm just interested to see what these things work like. They often have these overblown things where they say it's got a certain amount of PSI strength or it can hold a person against the wall upside down over alligators and all that kind of stuff. As those of you old enough to remember, the Polycell adverts will probably remember. But this is the real world. So how has it actually done? So where do you want to start? Well, actually, I'm going to show you what I was going to show you before. And uh, this is our mixing pot, which you saw a little bit earlier. And the uh, my mixing spatula or PCI Express slot, as it's known, is basically firmly stuck in there. And I can actually bend the metal and the plastic before it wants to come out. So there's quite a bit of strength there. Although if we do wrench the whole lot, then because it's not fully set, the you can see it's just pulled off there. Again, this is a shiny plastic. It's not really what it's designed to stick to. And I was giving it upward force and twisting it at the same time, which is a relatively unnatural force and it hasn't cured. So yeah, anyway, it will come off. It's not set in stone, so to speak, or set in steel, I suppose, as the case may be, but it is pretty darn strong. And for that particular instance, yeah, it just proves that it's not a permanent thing. It's kind of semi-permanent. But anyway, let's look at the things that we prepared. So first one, which is probably the easiest one, I've actually done it on both of my lamps. So I did it on the Superman lamp and I did it on this one. You remember at the beginning of the video, we just done a small little bead inside there. And actually that is stuck exceptionally well. One thing you'll see from some of the B-roll I've already filmed, I did actually trim away some of the excess which was on there. And literally I just got a sharp knife and cut into it 90 degrees kind of around the outside and underneath and then chipped it away and it came off. Didn't actually discolor the plastic too much but you could see where the actual JB quick weld was and it had gone a kind of gray color, which is what happens when you cut this stuff or drill into it. So what I did was got our Sharpie and literally just drew a line of Sharpie on there. And actually for all intents and purposes, you'd never know it had been done. So that looks pretty much as good as new. And now, even if I turn it upside down, the uh, fluorescent tube isn't gonna fall out, which is excellent. And it means it isn't gonna pop out at inopportune moment. Normally it pops out when we're filming and the light goes off and it's like, oh, damn it, I have to refilm that. So that is definitely a win. Happy days. So that's a one out of 
four, five. <laughs> it's, it's worked. It's done well. Next one, which uh, I thought was going to be relatively straightforward and easy, actually did turn out to be very good indeed. This is the Cooler Master fan, so we have the plastic side brackets which were uh, damaged in two positions. It's actually dried into a very nice kind of glossy dark black, which you'll probably see from some of the close-ups actually matches the plastic pretty darn well. You wouldn't really know at a, at a brief glance, you probably wouldn't even know it had been done, so absolutely brilliant. And moving it around, wiggling it, it's pretty bloody solid, it really is. So I'm very impressed with that because one side was considerably more damaged than the other. There is still a little bit of wiggle on this one, but I think that's because the screw which is actually holding it onto the frame isn't the best. And even if I move it on the good end, it still wobbles around quite a bit, but certainly is considerably better. And again, you'll see some close-ups of this so you can see how well it's done. But yeah, very, very impressed. Didn't expect that to hold at all, and it's done very well. And it's actually blended into the design really nicely. So again, another win. Now the next one is the uh, the springy clamps. So these are the mobile phone holders with the spring-loaded clamps. And I actually had to look to see which one was which because they both look almost identical, very little in them. And as you can see from there, you actually wouldn't really tell unless you have a very close inspection which one's been repaired. But it is actually this one because there is a few little globs in there which I can see. And I'm pleased to say it still works, it still springs, and it doesn't appear to want to snap off. So again, that has actually surprised me because that was quite a fine kind of hairline crack going across that really fragile point. <laughs> it's worked really well. I didn't expect it to, but actually, yeah, I was going to throw that in the bin. So that has saved that, although it's not a particularly expensive item, but it's nice to know that it's been repaired. And now if I need them, I've got a pair of them. So absolutely awesome. So again, another win. The next one is one which, again, I was actually quite amazed how well this is done. So you saw the MAF sensor, again, it's the MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor from our BMW E36 from many moons ago, and the top section had snapped off. And it was fully off, it was completely wrecked, didn't fit back on properly at all. But now, actually, with all the uh, quick steel in there, or quick, quick weld, rather, I should say, it's done a really good job. And again, it's dried into a very, very convincing. If you did a, a very nice, tidy job of this, you probably wouldn't even know it had been done. It is very, very similar to the black plastic. It really is. And it's gone into all the nooks and crannies and actually it appears to have held it particularly well. So give that a, a real, I'm going to try and break it off. <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. That is rock solid. So the force I was giving then, I'm imagining, I don't know for sure because I've, I've never measured it and it's not something you would do. But as far as I know, the clamps that hold on the side of there when it clips onto the uh, airbox, the pressure is basically just to hold it in place. It isn't a kind of a rip-off pressure. So, yeah, I think that is going to be absolutely fine. And if there's anybody watching who actually has a slightly older E36, which has got a failed math sensor, let me know and uh, I'll send it to you. You may have to pay a postage, though, depending on where you live. So there we go. I think this is uh, definitely a, a, a really good success. Very, very happy indeed. I've got to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting much out of it. I've used JB Weld before, the original JB Weld, where uh, originally back in the 90s, they had a display stand with two valves from an engine, which were basically welded together in the middle with the epoxy. And the idea was to try and snap them apart. And it was basically impossible to do. I didn't think this was going to be as good as that, but it certainly appears on the first instance it is. So what have we actually managed to fix with this? We fixed my small speakers on my desktop to the side panel. Excellent job. We've also fixed the fan mountings on this plastic fan bracket. We've also fixed the spring-loaded pop-up thing here on our um, Star Wars lamp and our Superman lamp. We've also fixed the springy plastic tensiony bit on the, uh, the phone holder. And we've managed to fix what was basically a destroyed math sensor. So for the cost of what it is, which is normally retails somewhere in around the seven to eight pounds mark, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on where you are, definitely worth a shot. Uh, before you go out and buy another expensive stuff or maybe just throw something in the trash, give it a go. You never know. It can be milled, sanded, etc., etc. So you potentially could make a, th a new threaded component for plastic, metals, etc. I have seen videos where people have actually recreated threads in engines and stuff using this stuff. So. It does have a ton of uses, but overall, yeah, I would say 
I'm definitely impressed. Very worthwhile getting, and uh, I can certainly see myself going around the house now and out in the shed looking for things which are broken to try and fix them. But anyway, that's going to wrap this one up. If you've had any experiences or you've used JB's quick weld before yourselves and you've got some success stories, please do tell us about them in the comment section below. Or if you've got an idea of something which I could try and fix or stick something to something, again, let us know and the funnier and more YouTubeable, the better. So this has been JB's Quick Weld. I've been Mike. This is my unboxing reviews now too. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.